Even though the LSU Tigers just concluded their season as national champs, our Talking Tiger Baseball is still going, and today we're talking Tiger Baseball with Russell Springer, who is a Sin Law legend, pitched for the LSU Tigers for three years, and was in the major leagues for 18 seasons. Obviously, I called you Russell because I heard about if you call Russ, or if I call you Russ, that it's like, oh, I'm not from Grant Parish, which I'm not. Well, that's, but, that's the way we, like if I was off playing somewhere, I was always Russ from college through pro ball, but I was known as Russell here. So if somebody in the stands, obviously everybody's always a hollering, you know, wanting the ball or whatever. Somebody hollers Russell, I turn around because I know they're from home. So you would always throw them the ball. Yeah, well, um. if I recognize them. <laughs> Obviously, we got to go back. So it was just a few years ago, just a few, right? Right. Um, so just talking about like, do you still just, does it feel like yesterday that you were just pitching for LSU? Um, no, it does feel like a long time ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I still have good memories of it. You know, I was there for three years and um, was actually at the College World Series two out of the three. So, you know, I got some good memories and still keep in touch with a lot of the guys on that team. And so obviously, uh, I saw Ben McDonald yesterday, and he was taking pictures with Dylan Cruz and everything. So I know that y'all had a lot of friendly competition. Like oh, yeah. if you would strike out eight, let me strike out. He'll strike out nine. Well, we were actually roommates for three years and went to Alaska together in the uh, summer league after our freshman year. And um, obviously, everybody was hyping the two of us. And uh, you know, going into our after our sophomore year, we were supposed to go one two in the draft. You know, before I got hurt and everything. So we pushed each other, but we were always friends, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it don't matter if it was throwing baseball or how many strikeouts you had the day before or, or the five mile run, you know. Mm -hmm. We both were work workaholics and, uh, you know, we pushed each other on everything from the workouts to the games, you know. It yeah. was good for both of us. And so obviously we'll take you back first right. to just the very beginning. Obviously I know that you were like, you know, I'm a guy from, from Pollock, not a lot of people just like Jesse Stallings, it's like, you know, mm. you're, I'm from Grant Parish, not a lot of people know. And so I know that your um, your story began kind of like your mom was driving and you saw a, what was it like, you, you saw a major league camp type thing? Or, or what, have you been reading old newspapers? Or yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I mean, if we we'll go back that far, I was uh, actually going swimming at my aunt's house in Alexandria and passed by Bringhurst Field and they were having a major league scouting bureau clinic there so i got her to drop me off and they went on swimming and i went up there and ended up uh throwing for a scout there and lit up the radar gun and next thing you know i got a bunch of scouts at my senior games and stuff you know and went on to college i was i wasn't gonna go to college i was gonna join the marines and see the world you know oh okay. and uh but next thing you know i have all these Big schools offered me scholarships, and uh, LSU was number one in the nation at the time, so you know it was a no-brainer for me. And so obviously, um, they were the preseason number one, and that's probably why a lot of people are, are signing there now too. Obviously, just because they're ch national well, it champions. Definitely helps the recruitment. Oh yeah, and so whenever you went to Omaha for the first time, and you pitch as a freshman, right, against Florida State. Uh, yeah. Okay. What were those, if you could just think back, those emotions, like knowing guys like Gavin Guidry going out there for the first time as a freshman. You know, I mean, you could feel it. Um, there's nothing like Omaha, you know, uh, as far as a college game, you know. Uh, I, you can almost compare it to pitching the playoffs in the big leagues. I mean, it's just a roar. Mm -hmm. You know, the crowd's a roar. And, uh, and it's, it's just good, good energy and everything. And I don't know, uh, back then you were young and bulletproof, you know. You yeah. didn't know. It never crossed your mind to fail, you know. So you go out there with that attitude, you know. you. I always tell young guys, you got to be confident, you know, borderline cocky. Mm -hmm. You don't want to cross the line, you know, just you want to walk it as close as you can, though. And that's that's kind of how I was. You know, I went out there um, even as a freshman thinking I was going to succeed, you know. Mm -hmm. And so which one which one was, was sweeter, I guess, the 1987 win or the 1989 win? Well, we had a better team in 89. We should have won. Mm -hmm. um, that's That was the only disappointment for us is – um, in 89, you know, we, we had the team to win it all. And, you know, we had myself, Ben McDonald, and Kurt Laskanik throwing the SEC games. And then we had Paul Bird and Chad O'Shea as freshmen. They end up in the big leagues too. All, all of us end up in the big leagues. And, and we, uh, we won a lot of games and uh, just came up short at the end. 
And so you're in the Skip Bertman era, era, obviously. How cool was that just, you know, to see him now? And I, I know you've well, probably seen him a lot. It's almost, it's, it's, it's good for me because I see his plan, you know. Back then, you didn't see his plan. He was just the guy telling the freshmen to go paint the showers and stuff, you know. But he had a plan to build up the system, you know. And in turn, it built up the whole SEC, you know. Uh, um, he was a motivator and a guy that had a plan, you know, and, and we were lucky. You know, he knew baseball, but we also had guys like Smoke Laval and Jim Wells, mm -hmm. who ended up coaching a long time at Alabama. Um, they were there too with the X's and O's and the baseball, you know. And so we had a, we had a good coaching staff. And of course, uh, Bertman had a long-term plan. Yeah. And, uh, and, and his plan was all the way through developing winning, helping recruitment, getting a new stadium you know he you know he had a long-term plan long after we were gone you know yeah but we guys like me and Ben Laskanik and Bird and OJ and those guys Joey Bell Guthrie those guys developed a winning atmosphere there which helped the recruitment and helped the fans come you know so it it was all part of the plan and it and uh you know it's worked out great because now the SEC is unbelievable <laughs> the facilities and pitching labs and nutrition and I mean, the ballparks are better than anything above AAA, you know, oh, yeah. so. Um, so it's a disappointment now when the guy <laughs> from the SEC gets drafted and you have to go to the minor leagues, you know, because yeah. the <laughs> ballparks are ratty. <clears throat> um, so obviously in three seasons, you probably had a lot of memories, but do you have any that kind of stick out to you? Um, well, back then it was a big deal to get on TV because they didn't televise a bunch of SEC games, you know, so. You know, I had some big games, and just so happens one of them was against Mississippi State, and it was on ESPN. So uh, you didn't, you didn't, you had the SEC network back then or whatever. So I ended up pitching a big game against the SEC on the, uh, against Mississippi State on ESPN, stuff like that. And of course, the College World Series. And but uh, most of my memories from college aren't necessarily the games. You know, um, it's the teammates. You know, and and the guys I still keep in touch with. You know, we have a we had a backup catcher named Richard Doty who I still talk to three times a week probably, you know. Wow. Um, okay. He didn't even play pro ball. <laughs> and we just were been lifelong friends, you know. And so obviously sticking with pitching and everything, I know obviously uh, with Ty Floyd doing what he did with 17 strikeouts, you know, uh, beating the SEC record, I know you probably had, you had that your freshman year, right? Well, I had to strike out for nine in his for record, I think. Year. and. Uh, I don't know if it's been broke or not. You know, I got a couple of records that hadn't been broke. You know, one of them never will be broken because now they have pitch counts. You know, I yeah. threw, I think I hold a record for long uh, most innings pitched in a game. I threw ten and two thirds. Wow. And okay. lost in the eleventh inning against Kentucky. I think three to two or something like that. And there wasn't nobody warming up. It was my game. <laughs> so I, I think I threw 168 pitches that game. Now guys don't throw that many in two games you know yeah but seeing them show up um just in Omaha and seeing like Gavin and see what he did in, in the, the very last game against Florida you know everybody thought that Paul Skeens was going to come in and Joe Johnson was like you know it's not close enough and and to see what a freshman could do and just see his talent well um Skeens you know it, it's weird you know you you throw every seven days on a regular college schedule and obviously he's got a future and you use him if you need to for a certain amount, but if they don't need him, that was probably uh, the best thing for his physical future as far as how they treat him nowadays, you know. But you got, I was impressed with that whole series because LSU wasn't the best team. They had some guys get hot at the right time. They had Floyd throw the best game of his career in an elimination game. They had uh, Akronhausen throw the best game of his life. You know, he, was, he didn't start a game all year. Yeah. And then you had, uh, um, was it Herring threw out the yeah. pen for a long time, did awesome. And uh, Cooper, who's had, had a good year last year, but had a kind of rocky year during the year this year, all of a sudden he was unhittable in the College World Series, you know? Yep. And, uh, you know, you yeah. can't help but uh, pull for certain guys, you know, like I pulled for Dugas and Beloso. You know, obviously you got your big name guys, but I was yeah. pulling for guys like, you know, Dugas has fought injuries and was playing with a separated shoulder for the last month and a half, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, you know, the guys that came out, you know, heard, you know, heard, you know, he was the story too, you know? That's he, true, yeah. So many storylines came together. He together. struggled as a rotation guy earlier in the year, put him in the pen, he found his niche, you know, throwing that ninth in and it was basically the closer. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, by the way, we got a winner take all college world series, you're starting it, you know? Yeah. 
So, you know, that's not as easy as it sounds. And for him to do what he did, he gave up two hits in the first inning and didn't give up one the rest of the game, you know. So, to me, those are the heroes, you know. And so, obviously, I know that you said that you, um, you've you watched pretty much every single game. I missed two. Okay. Oh, God, you missed two? Yeah. Mm. Which ones were they? I don't remember. They weren't <laughs> on SEC+. Plus. <laughs> oh, so you couldn't get it. You yeah, couldn't I couldn't get it. Get it. Um, but just like going back and or just whenever you're watching it and everything, even just against against Wake Forest and against Florida, what was that like just going back watching it? Do you have any superstitions? Like do you have to sit in a certain I chair? I don't. I don't. I'll tell you the way it works for me is being a pro ball guy for so long, I watched the whole season from a, almost from a scout's eyes, you know, from mm. a pro ball eye, you know, hey, this guy needs to do this to get to the next level. You know, this guy's going to, you know, have a shot. This guy's not, whatever. But once it gets to the regionals, you start having emotions get into it, and you start really kind of pulling for your team then, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's when it kind of picks up for me, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, I don't miss anything once the, once the regionals start and all that stuff. But, you know, before then, I pretty much, you know, just because I can't turn it off, I'm a yeah. pro ball guy scouting out the college team, you know. And speaking of pro ball, man, the draft is coming up. Everybody's talking about Dylan Cruz. They're talking about Paul Skeens. And obviously you're talking from a, from a scout perspective is what you're saying. What about Paul Skeens? What do you think? Like, do you think he's going to go number one? Do you think Dylan Cruz is going to go number well, one? typically pitchers uh, are a gamble, you know. And, and the way it's been going lately is they don't draft pitchers in the very top. But he's going to go anyway just because he's got a set of tools that's, you know, probably last time we saw a guy like him, as polished as he is, was probably Strasburg. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, Dylan Cruz is a five-tool guy. Um, everybody says, you know, Skeens, you know, he's going to go straight to the big leagues. Well, that's not going to happen because the pro ball game is so different. You know, like uh, like I said earlier, he was on a seven-day rotation yeah. um, here. Well, in pro ball, if you start, you're on a five-day rotation. And they say, well, you can just stick him in the pen. I'm like, no. Nah. You don't have the two-hour prep work to get ready. If the phone rings, you're in, you know, 10 pitches later, you know. That's true. Yeah. Um, he does have some things where I, I kind of see most successful SEC starters as being able to go to high E ball right away or, or whatever. Um, I think he's kind of double A mm -hmm. um, because there is some things he needs to work on. But his size is definitely pro ball. You know, his uh, ability to repeat his mechanics, able to move the ball in and out. Um, he need, you know, there's some things he needs to work on. You know, he needs to stay behind his changeup. Like uh, the last two games he pitched, all of a sudden his changeup was his second best pitch, you yeah. know, because he stayed on his changeup and it went a little more depth than side to side, you know. Yeah. Uh, stays off the bat plane, you know, in pro ball, that's something you can't get away with, you know. Same way with his slider. They all liked his big slider in college, but it's got to be shorter in pro ball. Um, but that's some easy adjustments, you know. he. I think he'd be fast tracked to the big leagues, but you got to remember too, this is the first year he's ever been a full time starter. Yeah, that's true. That's going to be what he does in pro ball. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if he got drafted in the first couple of picks and then shut down the rest of the year because this is the most innings he's already he's ever thrown, you know, mm -hmm. and they got all of a sudden they got a big multi million dollar investment now, you know. So, but he's definitely got his foot in the door. Pro ball guys are drooling on him because of his size. His work ethic is supposed to be great. Yeah. Um, Dylan Cruz the same way. He don't have a weakness really. He's got, uh, you know, he don't swing and miss much. He don't expand his own much. Most young guys, for a pitcher, it's hard to repeat your mechanics. Schemes repeats his mechanics. It's hard to, uh, as a hitter, to really know the strike zone and stay within the strike zone. And Cruz does that as good as anybody I've ever seen in college. And so we talked to a few former Tigers and everything, and I know Jesse said that he could see himself kind of in or in Gavin. Do you think that you could, you know, do you see yourself in, in any of the pitchers that this um, year? I was I was more raw in college, you know. I didn't, I'd, uh, you know, I still had uh, some things to straighten out in my mechanics, which I did when I got to pro ball. I just my thing in college was I threw hard, mm -hmm. you know, and. You know, I struck a lot of guys out. I was able to pitch in college because I knew myself, you know, I knew my strengths. And, you know, I could, at that time, I could really, I could throw hard and throw the ball in and out and up. And I had a pretty decent curveball. And, uh, but, uh, you know, what, another thing that slows down pitchers, I was, I was, I called my own game in college, which back then, that's one of the things Berkman did 
that has now everybody does is he called pitches from the dugout you know yeah. well i think you know that's great for college and but it kind of stunts you in pro ball because all of a sudden you don't know how to call your own game that's and true. And if you throw to a college catcher that had never called his own game, mm -hmm. so all of a sudden you're a pitcher and a catcher in pro ball that's figuring it out, you know, yeah. and Skeens is going to have to learn how to do that. Um, but, you know, you know, I was able to call my own game back then, and uh, Berkman kind of challenged me because I shook him off a little bit, and he called me in there and said, hey, you think you can call your own game? I said, yeah, I know I can. So. I did it and that way if I would have failed I would have bought into his program if I would have succeeded then that's fine so yeah. I ended up calling my own game a whole through all the way through college but uh you know that helped my development and it's something that scheme guys like schemes are going to have to learn so did you see like yourself in him kind of whenever no. you pitch or anyone I, I would say he's close to kind of what Ben was okay. uh Ben McDonald he they were both big guys that had good mechanics you know like I said I had to straighten my mechanics out after I got to pro ball um, they, you know, commanded the zone good down and had a good secondary pitch. Um, you know, Ben had to work on getting some movement on his ball and stuff like that after he got in pro ball. But uh, I, I say they were two more similar than anything else. I was more like a Hurd or a Floyd, you know. Yeah. Um, I had my strengths, mm -hmm. um, but I wasn't a polished guy, you know. And so uh, I know yesterday they unveiled the, the, the new Intimidator and everything. Yeah. Um, when was the last time you kind of like saw a game in Alex Box? Well, everybody thinks I'm not social because <laughs> I don't go back, you know, but, you know, most people around here that, you know, I kind of keep it, you know, in, in house. But, you know, yeah. I have an autistic son that's 24 years old and has had seizures for the last uh, four or five years, six years, seven years, something like that. I don't know. And uh, um, so I don't get to go places like that, you know. Yeah. Um, Last time I was at LSU, is I've been to the to the new stadium for a charity event. Um, um, Rick Green had a charity event there, and I, I went for that. And uh, but as far as going and seeing games, I just it's just not something I can do. I gotcha. But um, just seeing that kind of just happen yesterday, was it just like a, a moment that you're like, wow, this is this is happening again? Well, I mean, I pull for him as hard <laughs> as anybody. You know, I'm. I'm one of those guys, even though I played as long as I did, I still love the game of baseball. Yeah. You know, I watch college baseball, I watch pro baseball, you know, and obviously if I'm going to watch college baseball, I'm going to root for my alma mater, you know. And uh, so, you know, it's nice. It gives me bragging rights. <laughs> I've, I've had guys I've played pro ball with reach out to me the last few days and, you know, kind of say, you, you know, you, you yeah. got us this time, you know, we'll get you next time. And we were talking earlier, you know, you said you still talk to JC and mm -hmm. Warren and Jesse. And is that like just kind of a sin law thing? Like, you know, we're, we're together with this. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, I talked to Warren a good bit and, I, you know, I talked to JC some, you know, especially when I see his, his high school team doing well and, uh, or a guy like Garrett Edwards coming on, yeah. you know, whatever. And, uh, which is another thing for next year. We got Garrett Edwards, you know, that's uh, going to be healthy and we might have a sin law guy throwing some meaningful games for LSU and same way with uh, Fry, yeah. you know, uh, he was a catcher here, but he'll probably be the right fielder next year, you know? Yeah, so we're waiting to see what, what happens. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully they'll get out there. Yeah, I think they will. Um, one thing about Coach Johnson, he's known to be a recruiter and loves the transfer portal. So yeah. they're gonna reboot, <laughs> you know, they'll be good. Well, Russell, thank you for joining me. And we've been talking Tiger Baseball with Russell Springer.